Hello students, I hope you are doing good. Today we are going to learn poem A Tiger in the Zoo, which is in your CBSC class 10th first flight book. A Tiger in a Zoo it is written by Leslie Norris, who was a prize winning poet and short story writer. This poetry is upon the theme Importance of Freedom for All Living Creatures. In this poem, the poet raises moral question. We are trying to protect our endangered species, but are the zoos only alternative? Or are there any other way to protect them? And this is raised to this poem, A Tiger in the Zoo. What does this title tell us? It tells us about a tiger who has so many limitations in a zoo. The limitations in terms of its movement, the limitations in terms of its gestures. The poet presents a beautiful contrast of a gestures of a tiger and the movement of the tiger in the following five stanzas. The poem has two distinct settings. First setting is of the zoo where the tiger is kept in the cage. And the poet tries to explain angry and helplessness of the caged tiger that lives in a zoo. And the second setting is of the natural wild habitat of the tiger where it actually belongs. As you know children, the real place of tiger is the forest. The poem comprises of five stanzas poem. Each stanza consists of four lines and the rhyming scheme followed in all the stanzas is A, B, C, B. Got it? We'll move to the first stanza. He stalks in his vivid strips, the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet quite in his quiet rage. This is the first stanza. We will see the glossary that is new words that came in this stanza. First is stalks. Stalks means to follow. Vivid. It means bright colored. Pads. It is paws of the tiger. And rage means anger. Violent, uncontrolled anger. Okay. Now we will move to the explanation for the above stanza. In this stanza, the poet describes the appearance of the tiger in the zoo, how it is looking and its daily moments, what he do daily in the zoo. The tiger that is confined in the zoo moves around in the cage under his bright colored skin. The tiger can take only a few steps. Why? Because he has very soft feet like velvet and because of which there is no sound of the tiger's footsteps. The tiger tries to control his anger by quietly walking in the limited area of this cage. The poet has conveyed that the tiger moves up and down in his cage. He is full of rage, full of anger, but is quiet. Why? Because he knows that he is helpless here. Where? In the zoo. He can't do anything. He can't come out of the cage because he is caged in the zoo. Second stanza. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass, near the water hole where plum deer pass. New words. Lurking. Lurking means hiding. Sliding. It means moving. And plum. Plum means chubby. Now explanation, if the tiger was free, he would have hide himself behind the long grass near the water hole or pool and it could easily catch a deer in order to have it as its food. But here the poet conveys that the natural habitat of a tiger is to live in jungle where he could catch its prey that is food easily but a tiger in a cage cannot do so. 
Now, looking at the imprisoned tiger, the poet is filled with pity. He says that the poor tiger should have been in his natural habitat rather than in the cage in the zoo. He should have been lying in the shadows of trees and sliding quietly through the long grass. There, near the water hole, he should be waiting for some fat deer to pass that way. Thus, he should be laying there in expectation of a heavy feast. But now it's a pity that such a powerful animal is caged in a zoo. He is unable to hunt a deer for his food. Third stanza. He should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, bearing his white fans, his claws, terrorizing the village. New words will go. Snarling means warning sounds made by a tiger or some animal. Sound made by animal. Bearing means showing, to show. White fangs means white teeth of the animal. We will go to the explanation. Here the poet says that if the tiger would have been free, he would have snarled around the houses located at the outskirts of the forest. He would terrorize people with a sharp tooth and claws. He would create a fear among the people. He must have frightened the people. The poet here gives us a hint that if we destroy the natural habitat of tigers, they will be forced to come in the towns and village to find their food. Again he tells that the tiger should be crawling at the edge of the jungle near a village. And he should be showing his white fangs and claws while moving here and there. He should thus become a cause of terror for the villagers if we are going to destroy its habitat. And if the habitats are destroyed, the tigers will move in the towns and the cities. They will try terrorize us. They will harm us. Stanza 4 But he is locked in a concrete cell. His strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. Glossary we will go. What do you mean by concrete? It means building made of bricks, cement, sand and water. Now we will move to the explanation. The poet comes to the reality of the tiger that is inside the cage. He says that the tiger is confined in a strong cell which is made of strong building material, concrete material. He further says that as the tiger is behind bars, to his ferociousness, that is cruelness, violent, he is very powerful, though he is behind the bars. He is also behind the bars, he just stalks in the cage. He never tries to terrorize the visitors. Why? Because his power is restricted by the cage. He is imprisoned in the zoo. Therefore, he never tries to terrorize the visitors as he cannot attack them. The poet sees the tiger locked in the cell in the zoo. In spite of all his strength, he lies imprisoned there behind the bars. Very slowly and silently, the tiger moves up and down along the length of the cage. The cage is also too short for him, for his movement. He takes no note of the visitors who come to the zoo to have a look at him. Such a pity on this cage tiger. Last stanza of this poem. Fifth stanza. He hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars, and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars. Glossary will go. New words. That is first patrolling. So what do you mean by patrolling? To keep a watch. To guard. Okay. Now we will move to the explanation of this stanza. Here the poet says that in the night the tiger hears the sounds of the patrolling cars. Now what do you mean by patrolling cars? Patrolling cars are the vehicles of the police which are used to guard to keep a watch at night. You might be knowing patrolling cars. Uh, at night time the police van, the police vehicles give a round, they keep a watch, they guard the areas. 
so these are patrolling cars patrolling vehicles okay so in the night the tiger hears the sounds of these cars this patrolling cars he then stares at the shining stars with his shining eyes the poet wants to say that the tiger is sad he is little unhappy as he is confined in the cage he is present in the cage he is caged in the zoo so he cannot do anything therefore he stares at the stars in the night he just look at the stars unhappy and tries to divert his thoughts towards them the tiger knows no rest during the day because of the visitors even at night he remains disturbed due to the noise of the patrolling cars here the tiger is telling that he is little disturbed in the morning the visitors they come to see him they are disturbing and at night time this patrolling cars they are disturbing him so the tiger keeps staring at the brilliant stars with his brilliant eyes perhaps he is asking the heaven why he has been imprisoned here in the zoo he is asking a question to the god that why he is in the cage in the zoo his brilliant eyes show that he still hopes for the day when he would be able to run free in the forest he will be free from the zoo and roam happily freely in the jungle in the forest so he is restless he is not sleepy at the night he is just staring watching the stars now here the poet wants to give us a message the poet makes an important point about wildlife conservation we have to protect the wildlife the tiger belongs to the forest there it can hunt as and when required it hunts not out of envy or out of hatred as human beings do but only as a survival strategy see human beings they are destroying the forest sometimes they hunt the animals they kill the animals for their own but tiger is not like that he hunt the other animal or he kill animal for its prey for its food for its survival now his presence in the natural habitat is very necessary why because to maintain the balance of the food chain food chain you must have studied in science and you know that if any one of the organism is disturbed the whole food chain is disturbed so for maintaining the balance of this food chain it is very important that wild animals should be in their habitat in their own habitat natural habitat human beings believe that the tiger is dangerous but in fact humans cause danger to the natural habitat of wild animals and cage them for their selfish purposes the poetry also highlights that freedom is a natural instinct for all the living creatures we should not restrict their freedom we should be friendly to them so this is the message that poet wants to give us now one activity is there for you what you have to do you have to just revise the poem again you can recite it also and you have to identify or you have to recognize that which stanza is about the tiger in the zoo see there are five stanzas and out of that you have to just recognize that which stanza is about the tiger in the zoo and which one speaks about the tiger in the jungle okay means two different stanzas are there one when the tiger is in the zoo that stanza tells about the tiger is in the zoo and some other stanzas are there that tells you about that he is in the jungle so you have to just identify those two stanzas okay so just strum your brain and get the answer okay now we will move forward to the poetic devices okay we will go stanza wise so in the stanza 1 there is personification the tiger is personified instead of using it the poet has used he see for animals usually we use it but here the poet has used he so here the tiger is personified okay he has used he or his 
for the tiger. Okay, the poet has used instead of it, he or his. Got it? So, this was personification. Second poetic device will go. It is metaphor. Tiger's paws are compared with velvet. Here, tiger's paw are related to velvet. Pads of velvet. Okay. Now, next is enjambment. Now, what do you mean by enjambment? It is also one of the poetic devices. It means one line, thought or idea continues to the next line without any punctuation marks. I repeat, one line or thought or idea continues to the next line. Means one line is there and second line is there. The first line, it is without any punctuation mark. So, when like this, two lines appear, it comes under enjambment. We will take the example. The example is from your poem only. First line just see. He stalks in his vivid strips. The few steps of his cage. Pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rage. Now in this first line, just have a look. There is no punctuation mark. It is directly continuing with the second line. He stalks in his vivid strips, the few strips of his cage. Okay, so when like this lines appear, it comes into enchantment. Got it? Now next uh, poetic devices is imagery. Imagery means imagination. Okay, so here in the poem, the poet has tried to create an imagination, an image of a tiger that we can clearly visualize. Now we will move to the next poetic devices. It is consonants. In this, repetition of consonant sounds in the closely connected words are seen. We will move to the example. You will get understand. He stalks in his vivid strips. Here you can see the sound of S is evident. It is repeated. He stalks. S from stalks. S from his and again S from strips. So this consonant sound S is repeated. You must be knowing what is consonant in alphabet. How many alphabets are there? 26. 5 vowels are there and the remaining are consonant. So that consonant sound S it is repeated here. So it is not compulsory that S is only repeated. It should be repeat only S. No. Other consonant sounds may come in the other words. Okay. But here which consonant sound is given? S. So, S is repeated in different words. So, it comes under consonants. Okay. Now, we will move to the next poetic device. It is assonance. Now, what is assonance? Here, which sound is repeated? Vowel sound is repeated. So, you can see use of vowel sound I in the line. He stalks in his vivid strips. I from in. I from his. I from vivid and I from strips. So here I, this wall sound is repeated. Okay. Now we will move to the second stanza. Again in this enjambment, this poetic device is there. He should be lurking in shadow, sliding through long grass near the water hole where plum deer pass. You can see, you can notice that second line and third line, they are not having any punctuation mark. When one line continues with the next line without any punctuation mark, it comes into enjambment. Okay. Next poetic device in this stanza is alliteration. Now, what do you mean by this? Use of sound P, P at the start of two words plum pass in the following line where plum deer pass. P sound is repeated. Now, you have to notice that when two words are there and the starting letter is repeated it comes under alliteration now next poetic device is imagery the poet has tried to create an image of tiger's activities that is lurking in shadow so again here some imagination is given to the tiger's activities lurking in shadow and it comes under imagery we'll move to the third stanza enchantment 
again here you can see line continues to next line without punctuation marks the line which is in the poem i'll read out he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge again you can notice here in the first line no punctuation mark is there the line is directly continuing with the second line so here it comes enjambment now next we'll go to the poetic device it is assonance use of vowel sound o and i it is used here the sentence is he should be snarling around houses in the word should o this sound is there and around again o sound is there in houses also you can see o sound is there so it comes under assonance at the jungle's edge baring his white fangs his claws now here you can see that i sound is repeated baring his white fangs his claws in baring i is repeated then in his i is there white again i then his again i so this sound is coming there so it is a vowel sound and it comes under the poetic device assonance now we will go to the fourth stanza here we can see personification again the tiger is personified because the poet refers him as he uh, you can see in the stanza but he is locked he is means who the tiger is locked so again tiger is personified because tiger instead of tiger he it is used by the poet next is assonance use of vowel sound e the sentence is but he is locked in a concrete cell again you can see e sound it is seen in his locked concrete cell so e sound is used in this line next we'll go to consonants use of consonant sound s his strength behind bars in his s sound is there strength also and bars a sound you can notice here it is used so it comes under consonants alliteration use of sound b at the start of two words behind bars the starting letter of these two words is starting with the letter b so that's why alliteration behind bars b sound is used now we'll move to the fifth stanza again we will see here the poetic device is enjambment if we take the line 3 it continues with the line 4 without any punctuation mark we can see the line and stares with his brilliant eyes at the brilliant stars you can notice that in the third line no punctuation mark is there it is continuing with the fourth line so it comes under enjambment now we'll go to alliteration use of sound h in the starting of two words he hears again two words are there and the starting letter it starts with the same letter h so it comes under alliteration i'll go to assonance use of i sound again vowel sound is used here with his brilliant again i it is a vowel so it comes under assonance okay so we have gone with the poetic devices for all the five stanzas i hope you must have done all these poetic devices in ninth standard if not we will go more deep in all this poetic devices you can clear your doubts if any doubt is there in this you can just have a communication with the teacher surely we will solve the doubts and we will go more deep in this poetic devices okay see students for communication nice communication many skills are there and we usually do that for example reading skill listening speaking all these skills are there to increase your communication so this activity is somehow related to the speaking skill actually for this poem we have planned a small activity uh, based on a debate but as you know we are locked down can't have face to face discussion so it depends on you only that how you communicate and increase your 
speaking skill so you can discuss among your classmates or even have a debate with your friends on the topic for or against zoo means one group will talk for zoo a zoo for animals and the other group will debate on against zoo got it means one group is telling yes there should be zoo for animals and the other group it is telling no there should be no zoo for animals so this is what your topic is for or against zoo and on this topic you have to communicate very nicely you have to do a debate with your friends your classmates okay you will increase your communication skill yes textbook exercise will be given in the pdf form you will have to note it down very nicely in your class of notebook so complete your notebook keep it proper and preserve it thank you